Okay. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our webinar, Unlocking Online Sales with Shopstar. This is the fifth in the series presented to you by Corker. My name is Keelan Joshua, and I'm going to be your host for this hopefully engaging session on this beautiful Thursday evening. Um, so we're here to explore the potential of e-commerce for your business and have a look at what value you can gain by combining eCorker's innovative payment solutions with the dynamic uh, capabilities of the Shopstar platform. Uh, so this is all aimed at propelling your online business uh, to new heights. Cool. So our session spanning the next hour is going to be packed with valuable insights and some practical demonstrations. But before I jump uh, into that, I just want to let you all know that we are currently running a competition with Shopstar. Uh, so by integrating eCorker's payment gateway with your shop, you stand a chance to win uh, some fabulous Ikoka swag and a Samsung S22. The competition is uh, open to all, so make sure you participate. Um, and I believe it closes on the 10th of March. Uh, and finally, as we delve into today's presentations and discussions, uh, I do encourage you all to engage with us actively. Please drop some questions in the chat. Uh, we have allocated some time at the end of the session where we will uh, address those questions. OK, so let's meet the speakers. So besides myself, of course, uh, we're going to kick off with uh, Wadi Kearns. He's going to share some strategies to enhance your e-commerce efforts. Uh, following Wadi, we've got Hannah Ferno. Uh, she's going to take us through the Shopstar platform, explaining some of its features and how we can enhance your online store. And then finally, Tawanda Mutambwe is going to demonstrate uh, how seamlessly eCorker's Pay Gateway integrates with Shopstar. So hopefully ensuring a smooth transactional experience for your customers. So good evening, Wadi Kana Tawanda. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing from all of you. How's it going? Thanks so much. Nice to be here. Awesome. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's dive into our first segment. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce our first speaker for the evening, Wadi. Uh, Wadi's a seasoned expert in e-commerce. He's the founder of uh, Insaka E-commerce Academy and he's widely recognized for his practical knowledge in the industry. His journey from launching successful online businesses to guiding emerging entrepreneurs has earned him a wealth of practical insights. And tonight he's here to share with us some tips on how we can unlock full potential of online sales. Warwick, we are all eager to learn from you, so you can take it away. Thank you. Thanks for that great introduction and uh, thanks for inviting me to be here. Um, if you guys might uh, just unshare the slides, uh, I think that'll make me appear bigger on the screen. Um, I'm going to go through seven key steps for you to have e-commerce success here in South Africa. We're going to talk about five steps or five things that you can do when you're getting started to have more success. And I'm also going to go through two extra pieces for people who are, um, who are already selling online that want to grow their sales, right? So no matter which part of the journey you're in, you're in the right place. Stick with me. I've got 20 minutes and I'm going to hopefully share some great information with you, but you are going to learn something new. And if you implement that in your business, you're going to have more success. So stick with us. And um, once again, thank you so much for the organizers, to the organizers for inviting me to be here and to be part of this uh, great educational experience. You know, I'm all about sharing experience and sharing training on how to be more successful, uh, specifically about e-commerce in South Africa because the growth is happening. And if you are listening to this right now, you are in such a great space. I'm excited for you because this market, this industry that we're in selling online, it has been growing consistently over the last two decades, two and a half decades. And, um, and that growth curve is really starting to ramp up. You know, I've been selling online for nearly 20 years. I've done over hundred million Rand in online sales right here in South Africa. And along that journey, I've learned a thing or two which I share th with my students through the Insaka e-commerce Academy. And tonight, the seven points I'm sharing with you guys, it is a super summarized, but ultra important version of what I share with my premium students. And uh, I'm going to jam as much information as possible into this session. But I've got to say that um, part of my excitement for you guys is the growth that is yet to come, not the growth that we've had, but the foundation that has been laid where previously delivery wasn't really working in South Africa. Now that is largely sorted. Payments online weren't trusted by customers, but now we've got Ecorca and other payment gateways that are doing such a great job. Shoppers trust online shopping, and that's helping to surge our growth. Website platforms used to be really difficult, like you needed a rocket science degree to be able to build a website. Hannah's going to show you in a few minutes how to do yours tonight. Easy peasy. 
so many things have changed in the last 20 years since I started selling online that have made it easier. And, um, and that's great. But with it being easier, it also means that it's more competitive. Everybody's starting to sell online. So you need to differentiate yourself and accelerate yourself through the learning curve, which you're doing right now by attending training like this. So well done to you. And with Amazon knocking on our door, on Tuesday this week, I was in Cape Town. I sat with the general manager of Amazon South Africa, and uh, they are making big waves, and it's very exciting. And uh, soon we're going to have the Amazon.coza store live on the internet. And a lot of online sellers have been saying, well, that's really uh, an extra competitor. It's very challenging. And how would I ever compete? Well, tonight I'm going to share some ideas on how you can compete, but also I'd encourage you to grasp this opportunity with both hands. The fact that Amazon is investing resources and coming here to South Africa, that is proof that this market is set to grow. They wouldn't be coming here if they didn't think that, right? Well, of course. So we now know that there is growth coming. This is one of the few industries that is expanding. So all we got to do is get our tiny little piece of the pie and we can be extremely happy. And so in terms of the content I want to share with you in the uh, short space of time I've got with you here tonight, I'm going to go through five steps for you to get started, followed up with two steps to grow your sales. So let's dive straight in with step number one, which is really choosing the right e-commerce platform for you to build your store on. Because you need to have the right store if you're going to be selling online, right? And that is so important. And I'm not going to dive too deep into this because we are here with the amazing Shopstar team. Hannah's going to take you through this in a bit. So just take home that you do need to have an online store that is going to work for you, for you to be able to make sales online, right? That makes sense. So that is step number one. So tonight you'll get more information about Shopstar and how that can help you to get online and to get those sales. Step number two, this one's a bit more tricky. This is finding products to sell. You're not going to have much luck selling anything if you don't have anything to sell, right? So you've got to find some products to sell. But you don't just want to take anything and try and sell it online. You really want to try and identify winning products to sell on your website. You want to find gaps in the market. You want to find high growth industries. You want to find profitable products. And this, my friends, is where I see so many entrepreneurs stumbling and grinding to a halt and throwing in the towel and saying, well, how am I supposed to get any further if I just don't have anything to sell? And, uh, and I, I hear you. It's difficult. You know, a new entrepreneur, you can't go knock on the door of one of the big distributors and say, hey, can I open an account? They want you to have credibility. They want you to meet big minimum order quantities. And, um, and it's tricky. So you might go to Alibaba and that's a great way, but then you've got to have capital to invest. You might want to try drop shipping, but in 20 minutes, I can't explain to you guys why drop shipping in South Africa, it just doesn't work. We can do that in another session if the guys would have me back. But uh, drop shipping in South Africa currently, for many reasons, I mean, there's very few people who are able to make it work. Um, it can work, but it's very difficult and not as easy as some would like it to be. So if I could share some tips on how you could find products for you to sell, first things first, go to your own network. Do you have an uncle that's got some products, maybe a store, maybe a warehouse that you could get those products and sell it on your site? Do you know anybody where you have a relationship with them that they would want to work with you? That's important because the relationship and the trust is, is essential to being able to get started. You can also go to Alibaba and you can filter out products. You can check the verification of the suppliers and you can go there if you've got capital to do so. There is a cash flow element of having to buy that stock in advance and ship it across the world. There's risk involved in that. But you can also look locally. And I always encourage my students to try and find some uh, products locally where they can get uh, smaller quantities without investing everything that they have into it. And then consider a few different criteria for your products. The first criteria is the size of the product. When it comes to selling online, size does matter. If you are selling couches and fridges, it's expensive to store, it's expensive to ship. And you can have a lot of success with this, but obviously when you're starting out, you might want to start with smaller products, which are easy to store and easy to ship. You can put them in the spare bedroom at your house, under your bed, wherever you need. You don't have to go and hire a warehouse. And when you send that product to your customer, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. So the size of the product is important. The competition of a product, this is an interesting area because sometimes as an entrepreneur, we feel that we need to invent something. We need to be the first one to do to, to take a new product to market. And that can be a good strategy. But if you are the first one to take a product to the market, just be aware that the customers don't know that this product exists, right? Nobody else is selling it. So they can't buy it if they don't know it exists. That means that you need to invest heavily into marketing. 
And so the opposite side of finding something where you are the first and the only one selling a product, the opposite side is to go to somewhere which is really competitive, a product that's already in the market and compete on that product. But how would you do that? If there's other people selling this product, how are you possibly going to get sales? Well, some of the tips that I share later in this, in this session will help you to, to do that. But really don't be afraid of competition, especially well-formed industries where they are open for disruption. If you come in there and you have competitive pricing and you have good digital marketing strategies, you can disrupt the market. I've done this personally myself. When uh, the company that I started a few years ago, Action Gear, became the biggest independent seller of GoPro cameras. Later on, we became the biggest online seller of drones in the world, uh, in South Africa. And, um, and these markets are open for disruption if you know how to sell better online than everybody else. And um, so let's recap first. You need a, a website platform to, to sell on. You need products to sell. Third thing, you need payments. The good friends, Eddie Corker, are going to take you through that later in this presentation. So they've done some of the work for me because payments online are your way to receive payments from your customer. It's so much easier today to receive payments online than it did than it was when I started on, uh, in 20 years ago. Geez, I had to jump through so many hoops. It took me three months before I could... Um, before I could receive credit card payments on my site. Nowadays, with the likes of the Corka, you can do this in a day or maybe 48 hours until your FICA is verified, maybe even less. But in no time at all, you can start taking payments online. And that's crucial. If you want to sell something online, you need payments, of course. So first up, we need a platform. We need a product. We need payments. Then we've got to design our website. Again, Hannah will speak a little bit about this, but really what I'd like you to embrace is that designing a website or building your own site, it is not as difficult as it used to be. You do not need to be a design expert in this. Many marketing agencies will tell you that you could never build your own site or they, they have to do it for you. And of course, it's their business to sell you websites, so they want to do it for you. You can do this on your own. Uh, E-commerce platforms like Shopstar, they have these templates. They have builders, which are super, super easy for you to just use their templates select your pictures, add your products, install your payments. And then that takes me to the fifth step. The fifth step of my five-step process to go online, the first one was have a platform. The second one was get a product. The third one was get your payments set up. The fourth one was designing a site. And the fifth one, if you think about it, the fifth one is to go live. Why? Because we've got a website with products set up. We've got payments ready to go. It looks pretty good. Let's take our website live. Step number five, go live. And I know sometimes we want to wait until it's perfect or until we've done that extra piece of design or until we um, update that product description or get everything perfect. But ultimately, I'd like you to embrace the idea of going live sooner rather than later. Do not procrastinate. Do not wait for it to be done. Do not wait for it to be perfect. If you think about it, if you think about it, the guys uh, who are designing like websites like Take Lot or Cape Union Mart, they never kind of fold on their laptop and they're like, right, we're done. The website's finished. It is always a work in progress. There's always going to be some work to be done. It's never going to be finished. That's the first thing. The second thing, more importantly, is that when you launch your website, when you push, when you push that button and it goes live on the internet, there isn't like this big parade that comes past with balloons and people start storming into your website. No, it's, it's just like it's crickets. Like nothing happens. And uh, you send your link to your friends and your family and say, come visit. And that's great. But really, it takes time for your website to be indexed by Google and for people to start finding your stuff organically or for you to turn on the ads that brings traffic. None of that can happen until your website's live. And one part of the um, Google algorithm on how your site ranks is the age of your site. The only way to affect that is by turning on your site sooner rather than later. So those are my five steps to getting started. Then I promised two steps or two concepts rather on how to grow your sales. Um, now these two things, and if I'm tracking, I've got seven minutes left. Uh, Keenan, uh, Keenan and Mara, good, okay, cool. So the two concepts for growing your online sales are the two most important things for selling online. And I want you guys to write down these words because when it comes to selling online, people get taken away with uh, fancy marketing strategies like let's talk about uh, TikTok ads or YouTube ad uh, strategies and all of these things where you can go down rabbit holes, watching endless videos. And before you know it, you're watching cat videos or jokes on YouTube. And um, what I wanna draw your attention to with selling online is two concepts which lay the foundation for your success with selling online or growing your online sales. Those two concepts are conversion rate and traffic. And these two things work hand in hand. 
Because a lot of the time, website owners will say, let's get traffic, let's pay for ads, let's go and do some marketing strategies, let's write some blog posts, let's do some influencer campaigns. You're sending traffic to a site, but is it converting? Is it converting at the rate that it should? Because if you are sending traffic to a site that's not converting, it's like putting water into a bucket that's got holes in the bottom. Obviously, you'd want to plug those holes and then put more water in the top. Because conversion rate optimization speaks about making fine tuning tweaks and changes to your website so that when you get traffic to your site, you convert more of those browsers into paying customers, into buyers. And if you don't do that first, then you're wasting your time and your effort and your money on getting more traffic to your site. And so I'd encourage you to embrace those concepts. First, make sure that your conversion rate is good and then get traffic. What's a good conversion rate? Well, don't type that question into Google because you'll end up seeing American stats, which tell you like four or 5%. It's not gonna happen in South Africa unless you're really good. On average in South Africa, if you can hit one and a half percent or above, maybe 2%, you're shooting the lights out. And what that means at 2% is that for every 100 visitors to your site, you can expect two sales, 2% 2 conversion rate. And when you get your conversion rate up, that's when you go and dial up your traffic because then you're sending traffic to a site that's converting and you know that your time and money and, and uh, effort is going to yield good investments. But in the beginning, just to manage your expectations, on that time when you followed my first five steps and you turn on your site, the first 100 visitors is not going to bring you that sale. Unless if it's your auntie or your friend or somebody, um, that's always fun. But random strangers on the internet, it takes a bit longer for that first uh, amazing sale to land in your inbox, saying that you sold to some stranger on the internet. On average in South Africa, it takes 800 unique visitors to hit your site before you can expect that first sale to come in. So that conversion rate in the beginning is very slow, but you're still improving your site. People are visiting there for the first time. They need to consider the products that they're going to buy and your trust is still being established. So don't be disheartened if you get four, 500, 600 visitors on your site and you don't see that sale coming in. Push for 800 because that's the sweet spot. That's the average in South Africa before you're going to get your first sale and then go from there. But keep pushing, keep persevering and make sure that you are following those first five steps to get up and running and then focus on improving your conversion rate before you turn your attention to traffic. Once you've got a good conversion rate, flood that bucket with water and you know that you're going to get lots of sales. And then we can turn our attention to fancy marketing tricks, uh, strategies and, uh, and all these fun things. But don't be disillusioned or confused by all these shiny objects that people talk about on the net. What I've shared with you here is uh, 20 years worth of, uh, of experience together with training that I've been doing with my students for um, since 2017 in Nsaka. And, uh, and I hope that you guys will take your notes and implement it yourselves because this stuff does work. And, uh, and with that said and done, I want to hand it back to the amazing host of the session. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions for me now, or otherwise I'll pick up Q&A at the end. Yeah, thanks, Warwick, um, for sharing all those powerful insights. Um, I'm sure everyone's buzzing with some uh, new ideas. So as you, as Warwick mentioned, just uh, if you have questions for him or indeed any of our speakers, do drop them in the chat. We'll get to them at the Q&A session towards the end. Um, but for now, I'm thrilled to introduce our next speaker for the session, Hannah Ferno. Hannah is the head of customer success at Shopstar. And she plays a crucial role in ensuring entrepreneurs like you can fully leverage the Shopstar platform. Anna, take it away. Hi, nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. I'm so keen to get talking. After everyone's feeling so pumped up and inspired to start their online site, now I can tell you how to do it. <laughs> so yeah, so I was the I'm the head of customer success. I worked in customer support for a long time, getting to know all of the users, helping people start their online store. From there, it just gave me really valuable insights into um, the users that were looking to start an online store. And then now I head up Shopstar Social Media, and I'm a performance specialist at Shopstar's sister company, Boost Marketing. And that just really came from yeah, getting to know the people and getting to know the needs um, that everyone has, and then growing to sort of help and fill those roles. Um, so Shopstar is a platform that gives you the tools to build your online store, everywhere from listing your products to, you know, setting up your payment processing, we're going to be that one-stop solution um, for selling online. Uh, we've really tried to simplify the process of selling online. It can seem, you know, super nerve-wracking and, you know, get people messaging in saying that they're 
they're really not tech savvy and you you think like what Mawarik mentioned that you need to be this rocket scientist to build your site and you need to know you know two languages of code but we've really aimed to simplify those tools so that quite easily and I'll show you just now in pretty much five steps um, you can get going and selling. So Shopstar's heart um, we've really tried to build a community driven space we've we we want south africans to turn their business dreams into reality and we've really realized the the power of passion and we want to give you the tools to turn your passion into a profit um so we've really like fostered this culture of hustlers and makers and go-getters which i think really speaks to the entrepreneurial spirit of south africans we really do like you know conquer the circumstances and really go and get it, which is amazing. So we really, we, we're trying to provide the tools for that from our social media to the platforms tools to our support team. We really were speaking to South Africans with a lot of heart, which is quite amazing. It's awesome to be a part of it. Um, so we really try to, to put a personal touch in everything that we do. Um, we value personal connections and, you know, just our support team. We're never going to have a, a bot involved. We're real people helping you. And when I say we really care, we really do. We want you to start your online site, but we want you to succeed because it doesn't help us if you get going and, you know, set up your site and, and drop off after that and forget your dreams. We actually want you to succeed. Even our social media, we focus so much on featuring these stores and these amazing um, stories of people overcoming things and, and reaching their business goals. So yeah, let me show you, um, just walk you through a few steps of the Shopstar platform, show you what we have and show you how simple it is to really get going. So this is the Shopstar dashboard. Um, a good reminder on the competition that we're running. So remember about that. <laughs> Um, if you scroll down on your dashboard, once you get going, you'll see there's a couple of simple steps. We've given this to you so that it's not overwhelming and you're able to um, take it step by step to build everything. We've got it so that you can tick them off as you get going like this one, clicking each of them to give you more information and a tutorial video. I've personally built up Shopstar's um, YouTube channel with tutorials from payment gateways to adding products all the way to SEO, everything to to really help you. So if it seems overwhelming, everything is there with a step by step video. So the first thing we can look at doing is adding your products or services. So under the product section, we're, we've got a very simple tool to add your new products. Everything from names, descriptions, images, all of that you can add over here all the way down to your product variants, which will be your um, different colors, sizes, all of that. Super simple. Add all the information in and um, it'll all be set up for you. We've got other options, even for digital products, um, uh, um, catering for services. If you want to, you know, not have a add to cart, but um, maybe inquire here or everything we've, we've catered for all types of businesses. So once you've gone ahead and added your product, um, you can allocate stock to them. So this is also a nice and simple tool. You can go ahead, add your product, um, your stock numbers in, either adding to them or setting them, as well as catering for people who don't want to track stock. So you can disable stock tracking and have an in infinite amount of stock. Say you make something on demand or, you know, you don't want to even track stock. You can do that as well. So we've got this going, which runs in the background, so you don't need to worry when you run out of stock here, it'll stay out of stock on your site. Um, and we've built this to be really robust. So that's the first step to um, adding your product. It's super simple. Um, we can leave the payment gateway for last. Uh, setting up your shipping options. So if we go over here to settings, shipping, you'll see you're able to add shipping options. We've got two options here. You can either add them manually like this, which is per location. So shipping for your suburb, your city, the rest of South Africa and international. You can really customize this to work for you. Say I don't ship international, I can leave that blank. The system will automatically notify customers who add their address as an international address that the shop doesn't ship there. Um, and then you can say, 
you know, I have a better rate for people in Cape Town. I can add that here. I can add multiple options per location and say then I have a different rate for the rest of the uh, rest of South Africa. I can add that as well. So this is really nice and customizable. But if you need anything more than that, we also have an integration with Bob Go. So that will allow you to have real time rates depending on weights and sizes and locations, which will just give you a little bit more freedom if you are needing um, more customization. So that's another simple one, just setting up your shipping. Adding your domain is another one we always get asked, can I have a custom domain? And yes, you will automatically get uh, your shop.shopstar.co.za domain that'll come with it. We provide the hosting, so you don't need to buy any of that. Um, if you want to have a, have a custom domain, you can register one with any domain host of your choice and just add that in. Yeah, it's as simple as purchasing the domain with them adding it in and just getting them to um, point the domain to your store. Quite simple. Um, so we, you know, you have a free version if you want to get started and always at a later stage than if you want to upgrade to a custom domain, which we do recommend. It really adds a nice personal and professional touch to your site. You can always add that in. So we're never going to uh, limit you in that area. Next thing is designing your store, which is the fun part. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the page builder. This is another tool that we've made very simple because you can sort of, you know, if you're able to do too much, you can create a not great looking site. So we've really tried to balance the, um, the functionality that you've got, all the customization options that you need, and you can build, build something very personal and representative of your brand. But we've kept the tools confining enough that pretty much whatever you do, it's going to look great, which I, th which I think is a really good um, balance. So basically, in our page builder, we've got two views. We've got the add blocks view, which we're in now, and then we've got the edit content view. So we'll start out here in the add blocks view. And blocks are just pieces of content. So we've got a whole load of them, all for different types um, that you can go through. And once you've decided on one, cool, I'd love a product grid on my home page. I'm going to drag it and I'm going to drop it to my page preview here on the right. It'll automatically pull through the products that I've added um, and you can play around with the layout over here until you're happy. You can do this for multiple pages. On the top left here, you can see that I have multiple um, pages or menu items. I can create new menu items. I can make uh, menu items drop down from other menu items. So um, you've got all that functionality. So I want to do shop and then under a t-shirt and pants, I can do that. Um, so once you're on a page, you can edit it like this. I'm happy with my layout of my home page now. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the edit content view. This is where I'm zoomed in. And now I'm able to actually edit my content. Um, there will be settings on a few blocks that you can change, but there's actually functionality for me to edit text, use my tools, edit colors, add images, replace um, images that are from the content blocks. I can replace them with my own. So here I can really customize my pages um, using a whole wide range of tools. There's also options where you can um, adjust some store design settings, adding your logos, your colors, your fonts, all of that. Um, it's quite nice that it's all in one place over here, which will pull through to all your blocks. So you're not going to be sitting there for ages editing every single block. You can do customizations on each block, but this way it applies really nicely, giving you um, a, a nice seamless look on your site. As well as some other settings, you know, you can adjust whether you want star ratings on your site or, um, you know, a little label that says low on stock, anything like that. We've given you the options to do it, even the options to add custom code. Um, if you know how to do code and you want to add some in, we've given you the freedom to do that as well. So this is a really fantastic option. You can view it in all different um, uh, orientations on mobile versus desktop. It's all here. Cool. So that's designing your site. You can go back over here. And the last thing that we would really like to go over is en enabling customer payments. Um, so if we go to settings, payment methods, over here you're able to um, 
multiple payment gateways. And the one we can focus on today is Ecorca. So we've really made this very simple that um, integrating literally means going to their site, signing up with them, copying some keys and pasting them over. There's no code or complicated processes. Um, it's very simple, just pasting them. Ecorca will show us how to do that. Um, and it's, it's just like that. Um, we've given you all the, the other bells and whistles that you're going to need, giving you multiple in integrations. So you need MailChimp. Um, you know, we integrate with all the Google tracking tools, Facebook, all of that is, is all here. Um, and then, but, but you know, like Warwick said, these are the simple things. You get started, you get going, you've got the foundations built here now, and then you can um, start exploring. We've even got Shopstar Boost, which is a really great mention. Um, we really saw the need for people to have professional services. You know, um, a lot of these hustlers and creators that we cater for are, uh, you might have another job and this is a side hustle and eventually it becomes your main hustle. So we want to enable you to do that. So we've given you um, a graphic design options that you can employ one of our graphic designers to design your site if you need that, as well as online marketing. And that's where I really specialize now is providing the, um, the expertise to really market your store effectively. Um, often, you know, you've got no idea and you sort of just throw your money to the wind. Um, you know, like Warwick went over, you can just get a whole bunch of clicks, but not get that value out of your conversions. Um, so that's where we can come in and offer professional services to really take that weight off of you and offer you marketing that's really effective for very good rates. So, um, yeah, that is really as simple as it is. It's, if it seems quick, it's because it is quick and we've created it to be like that so that um, you can get going quite easily. So um, over to Insaka to, um, to Ikorka to show us then how to um, integrate into the Shopstar platform. Integrate. Yeah. Thanks um, so much, Shana, for that insightful overview of the platform um, and showing the design and specifically the ease of use. I think specifically it's like pretty cool to see that you don't need much of like a developer's touch um, to work in the platform. So that's uh, pretty cool. Just a quick reminder again that uh, uh, you we are open to questions. So please keep dropping those questions in the in the chat and we'll address uh, we are addressing some of them as we go and we'll address the others uh, in the Q&A section at the end. OK, so just moving on now, it is my honor to introduce our final speaker for the evening. Tawanda Mutamwe. Tawanda is a key player here at Ikorka and a star product designer. His expertise in technology and business development helps bridge, gap, bridge the gap between cutting, cutting edge payment solutions and practical business needs. Uh, tonight, Tawanda is going to give us a hands on demonstration on how to integrate uh, Ikorka's pay gateway with the Shop, Shopstar platform. Tawanda, take it away. Thanks, Kilen. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, I've got my my hands full here after work and Hannah's demo. Really good. So I'll do my best. Mine is going to be a bit short. It's going to I'm going to show more than speak, but I'll try and speak at the, at the same time. All right. So let me share my screen, and then we can jump right into it. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take you through um, uh, three key aspects. So uh, how to how to log into your dashboard where you'll be able to uh, find your shop star key. Um, and if you already don't have an Ecoca account, I'm going to show you how to sign up to the Ecoca platform. And lastly, I'm also going to show you guys how uh, some of the cool features we've built to help you manage your business. So um, to just start the journey, if you go to ecoca.com, uh, our website will open up. Uh, we've got a variety of uh, payment solutions from you from in person. Uh, payments, that's card machines, uh, to online payments, uh, things like paylinks, sending invoices and accept, allowing your customers uh, uh, to pay you through that method. I won't spend too much time on the website. Uh, uh, feel free to go explore um, and find the information you need. So from my demo, I'm just going to click login. So if you want to log into your dashboard, you can just go to coca.com, click login. That's just going to direct you straight to our login page where you just need your email address and password to log in. Otherwise, if you don't have an account yet, you can just click uh, sign up down here. 
sign up and that will just ask you to enter an email, a cell phone number and create a password. So you can actually do this um, and then we'll ask you a few questions about your business, the type of business you run uh, to do some figure checks and provide your ID. But if you're in a rush and you just want to create your, your account and then do this later when you get home, you have that uh, possibility. You can just create um, your account um, and then come back to the sign login page, log in with those details, and you can pick up your onboarding journey from within our dashboard. So it's it's as simple as that to sign up and uh, continue your your onboarding with Ecoca. Our agents will assist you through the process as soon as you sign up, uh, get all the documents they need from you, and then um, your account will be verified and you can start trading. So I'm just going to log in here with my own details uh, into the Ecoca dashboard. Perfect. So I'm I'm logged in. Um, as soon as I log in, I'm sitting on the cell summary. So this is the uh, landing page of our dashboard. It really gives you an overview of what's happening in the business. So you've got your gross sales. Uh, that's the total number of sales that you've processed for that specific range. So currently, I'm on current month. You can have a look at current week. Uh, today, as well as last month that will pro uh, be coming in the future. So you've got your gross sales. You can read more about what gross sales entails through these two tips. You've got number of sales, which is just the number of items you've sold, uh, as well as the average sales. So um, uh, what's the average uh, of the sales that you've performed uh, in that specific period um, based off the number of sales? So we just uh, take your gross sales, divide that by a number of sales to give us your average sales. Below, you've got a graph. So uh, really the idea we brought in the graph was to allow you to see the trends of whether you're doing better uh, this month as compared to last month. So yeah, uh, in orange, that's my last month. You can clearly see this month I'm doing much better. Uh, since the sixth, uh, my graph is uh, boosted off uh, the, the floor and I'm performing much better with sales. So this is just to help you visually without having to crunch the numbers on an Excel sheet. You can just see clearly is, is the business doing better and at what point did you start doing better? Is it more in the middle of the month or is it more early in the month where you get all the business that sort of sets you up for the rest of the month? So you can sort of derive all those sort of insights from this graph. Uh, on the right, you've got the next settlement. So this is basically uh, if you process payments with us, uh, we will settle you the next day and we'll show you the upcoming um, amount uh, that's going to be coming into your account right here. Um, me being me, uh, my business is not doing great, so I don't have any upcoming settlements, unfortunately. But otherwise, if, if my business were doing well, there would be uh, X amount uh, scheduled for next month. It actually will tell you when you can expect it to arrive in your bank account uh, based on some calculation we've done at the back. You got the ability to view more, so see all your settlements. If you want to do your recons at the end of the month, you have that ability. And then uh, on the on. Below the next settlement, you've got the sales target. So quite an exciting feature. We're really excited about this one because uh, it allows you to set a target for your business and track it. So you can set here, my target for, for the month is uh, 40,000. I've only done 28,000 so far, so that's 71%. So not too bad. And um, the company will actually go as far as to tell me how much sales I need to aim per day to reach my target. So for me, that's 816 per day uh, in the next uh, 14 days. So talking to other business owners, they found really this useful because it helps them to know if they need to run specials. Maybe it's the end of the day, uh, they're just missing that mark by um, a couple of runs. They can run a special just to make sure that they hit that mark. And then at the end of the, uh, end of the month, uh, it all adds up to, to uh, allow them to hit the target. And, and below that, the recent transactions, this is just basically all the transactions you just recently performed. We put this in just to help you uh, quickly uh, check transactions that just occurred. If you want to verify whether a transaction went through, or not, um, or uh, you just want to get a receipt number to give to your customer. It's all available for you, and you've got the ability to go into the view more section where you can um, really go back in time last month, last three months, and have a look at uh, all your transactions there. So I'm going to stop there. I know that's a handful. I'm going to jump to why we're over here, which is the uh, payment get, uh, integrations. So besides Shopstar, we've got WordPress and Wix. I won't talk to those today. I think we'll, our focus will be on Shopstar. So if you're not, if you're already on WordPress and Wix, uh, Wix, Wix, uh, Wix <laughs> you have the option uh, to to also connect with the Quokka uh, on those platforms. But on Shopstar, um, I'm just going to click. Uh, 
basically if you've already generated your key we just ask you to manage it but if you haven't we just ask you to generate your key so i'm just going to generate a key i'm going to type in a store name so we just ask you to type in a store name um my store is african joy i'll create a key just give the dashboard a second and just like that, um, I've already been able to create an application key ID as well as the secret key. So from here, you can just um, copy your application key ID um, or copy your secret key. Uh, so you can view a secret key, copy it, uh, copy the application ID, then uh, take that to Shopstar's uh, dashboard and paste them in as HANA showed us. So as simple as that, uh, you'll be set up with payments and you can start um, selling products online. So yeah, I'll stop my demo there. Um, yeah, that's all I had, and I hope um, that was clear and straightforward and in terms of how to get your shop star key. Awesome. Thanks, Tawanda, for that demo. Um, and in fact, to all of our speakers for your invaluable contributions, we are going to switch over to the Q&A section um, for this evening. So addressing some of the questions in the chat. Uh, we're going to try and cover as many of them uh, as we can in the time we have left. So just bear with me as I pull some of these up. Um, and I think the first question uh, is for Hannah. Uh, there's a question here. Can I sell tickets to workshops or events on Shopstar? Yes, you can. Um, we actually recently added the um, ability to, for you to sell digital products. So you can just, when you were setting up your product, choose that it's a digital product, add the file or link or whatever that you need to um, send to your customer. Once they check out and it's a successful payment, um, then they'll get an automatic email that you can set up with their download links. Um, yeah, and we've got all of the adjustments that they won't be charged for shipping or anything like that for digital products. Awesome. Okay, then there's a follow-up question here for you, Anna. Um, what percentage does Shopstart take? Cool. So let me actually, um, I'll show you here. Here on our website under pricing and features, you'll be able to see all of our packages. Um, I did see there was a question also about um, what it costs to to do um, use Shopstar. So here it is. We've got our different packages. The only difference between the packages is the amount of products that you can add to your store. So there's no limits on the transactions that you can make, the orders you can make, anything like that. It's only the, um, the products. So it's up to 25 products, up to 100 products, and then unlimited products. And they're all actually currently on 50% off. So it's perfect time to um, start your free trial. You get a free 14 day trial, access to all features in the trial. Um, the only thing you can't do is go live. Um, so that's there. And then the transaction fees are also laid out really nicely here. It depends on how much you're bringing in, um, but it's upwards of 0.05% um, transaction fees. Okay, cool. Thanks, Anna. Um, there's another question here. How does the how does the process start? Why do you come assuming this is aimed at you from a more strategic perspective, if you can offer some insights? Cool. Um, how the process starts. Like yeah. selling <laughs> well, I suppose as an entrepreneur, you need to have an idea and you need to have the drive. And then uh, the, the five steps that, I've, uh, that I outlined earlier of selecting a platform, finding a product, setting up your payments, designing your store and going live. That's really how the process kicks off. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I did see some questions around digital marketing, and I know this is always a hot topic. In fact, mm -hmm. there was a Q&A saying that uh, the biggest challenge that people are having is advertising their products and um if you if that's your biggest problem then at least you have a product to sell which is a great step in the right direction because you are you're moving you're moving ahead um so perhaps if i could speak to this advertising your products because um what you need to do is you have to get eyeballs on your product earlier i spoke about that conversion rate the conversion rate in south africa is really good like one and a half to two percent that means for every hundred visitors you get two sales so you need to advertise your products to loads and loads of people to get that traffic on your site in the hopes of getting one or two sales, right? It sounds like a lot of work, but we can do this through um, two forms of advertising. The two ways that you can get traffic to your site is either organic traffic or paid traffic. Organic traffic is like, uh, it's like the tortoise in the head type of scenario, whereby your organic traffic is uh, slow and steady. It takes you a while to get there, but uh, the good thing there is that it's free. You write some blog posts, you put out some content, and uh, that helps Google to recognize the topic that your site is about. And then if you've done it correctly, it'll show your site to people when they search online for the products that you sell. And it will show it organically so you're not paying for that traffic. 
However, that's low, uh, that's low and it's steady. The alternative, if I said tortoise and the hare, the hare in this example is the paid traffic. You throw some money at it, you get some traffic. Um, Hannah said at Boost, they've got uh, some great digital marketing strategists that'll help you to do this. And, um, and it is good to partner with somebody or to try and learn how you can do it yourself to make the most of your marketing spend. But really, you can advertise on Instagram, on Facebook, TikTok, on YouTube. You can do all of these strategies. And really, people often ask me, where's the best place to allocate my budget? It depends. It depends on your business, your customer, um, how you plan or uh, where your customers hang out. That's the best question to ask yourself. Like, Where are my customers most likely to be hanging out? Let's advertise to them on that platform. But you got to test. Test Pinterest. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, let's move the budget over to TikTok. If that works, great. If not, let's move it somewhere else. However, everything I've mentioned so far is social media marketing. And don't forget about good old Google Ads. Put some budget into Google Ads because it is more intent driven. When somebody's on Facebook and you show them their ads, they're not looking for your product. You might get lucky and they're like, oh, I wanted that. And they go and buy it. But you are using top of funnel awareness in Facebook and social media marketing. In Google Ads and YouTube Ads, you are finding people who are searching for a particular thing. And often they're saying, uh, the price of that new Samsung S22 that you can win in this competition. People are searching for products to buy and they are far more intent driven. They are further down the purchasing cycle. They are ready to purchase. It costs a bit more to advertise on Google, but they are higher quality leads. And so you definitely don't want to forget to put your budget into Google ads. In fact, my advice to people without being able to look at your numbers and know what you're selling as a broad stroke uh, piece of advice, I would say the starting point for advertising your product, which seems to be the biggest problem according to that poll, would be to allocate your budget 60% into Google ads and 40% into social media marketing, and then to test and monitor and adjust as need be. But don't forget about organic traffic. That is the that's the hit, that's a tortoise. The effort that you put in today, that's gonna yield long-term results. Because with paid ads, when you turn off that budget, the traffic goes away. Organic is more sustainable. It gives you long-term advantage. So that's a bit of a longer question to your, uh, a bit of a longer answer to your question, but back to you. No, thank you. That was really insightful. Cool. And then just a final question for Tawanda. I saw in the chat um, something about uh, invoices. So maybe you can uh, chat about that a bit for a second. <coughs> Yeah, 100%. Um, so yeah, you can create an invoice uh, um, for your business uh, to send to your customers through our Epoca dashboard. So we're actually in the middle of uh, releasing a new feature where you can actually add products and services and then add those products to your invoices. So on top of not just being able to create an invoice that you can share with your customer over email, um, you can also they can also pay that invoice through uh, Epoca, so it's all integrated. They just receive a link on their side over the email. They see the invoice. They're like, okay, I'm ready to pay. They click a link and they pay you. That money comes straight uh, into your, your account, and then we settle you the next day. So I don't know if there was anything specific about the Epoca invoice, but it's it's freely accessible. You can, as soon as you got your credentials for the dashboard, log in, uh, navigate to uh, IK invoice, and you're good to go. You create invoice and then just follow the steps. So yeah, pretty pretty easy to, to get right. Awesome. There's a follow up question here about whether the details will be on the invoice. Um, yeah, I think it's an easy yes. Your your shop's details as well as the customer's details will be on on the invoice. Cool. I think um, we'll th we'll take that as the last question for the evening. Um, I wonder if there's any closing thoughts uh, from any of our speakers. Cool. I'll take that as a no. Then as uh, we, oh, um, if, if, if I can, I was wait, I was ladies first. I was going waiting for Hannah, but uh, let me take uh, take the mic for a second and just encourage people to take action. You know, you spent an hour of your evening with us learning about e-commerce. The time is now. Stop procrastinating. Take action. If you've already started, fantastic. Keep going. If you are attending this in the hope of finding out how to start, you now know how to start. Don't wait. The, the growth is here. And the sooner you start, the more competitive advantage you can grow. So don't wait any longer. Just get going and learn as you go. Awesome. I know. Yeah, I think that's great. I mean, like I said, we're South Africans. We make and go get. And you can see that I think this is a really nice thing about these South African companies like Shopstar, Koka and Saka, everything. Um, you can see that we have a heart for people and helping people reach their dreams. So we've all got great. 
um we've all got great yeah. stuff out there to do, um, tools that you need so just use each of our platforms to really help you get going Thanks. The one that, I don't know if you have a closing thought. Yeah, um, I just want to say um, you don't have to wait to get home to access the dashboard uh, on your PC. Our dashboard is mobile friendly, so even if you're chilling on lunch, you've got a gap, you've got 10 minutes, log in, check how your business is performing, perhaps even generate a shop star key and, you know, get that online store going. Go. So, yeah, good luck. Nice. So, yeah. as we wrap up this evening's session i just want to remind everyone again one last time about that competition remember integrating ecaucus payment gateway into your shop um, can win you a fantastic ecaucus swag and specifically that samsung s22 so don't miss out and then just a, a thank you to all of our speakers um thanks for your time thanks for sharing your insights and then also to all of the attendees um, keep an eye out uh, for the next webinar in our series um, thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Ikoka.